So just real quick on this one, just to kind of reiterate this standard form stuff, is the idea is to get it into this form so that we can see what the center is and also the radius, right? Nice thing about this one is it won't give us a perfect square as the radius, and that's okay. So let's go ahead and move some of the terms around so that we can complete the square for both the x and the y. All right. So uh, let's move this minus 2x closer to this x squared. So we got x squared minus 2x. And by the way, this is all made possible by the commutative property of addition. Even though we see some subtraction, right? We can make that plus a negative 2x, just as an example. And then we've also got this y squared minus a 6y. Those are like terms. And then we're going to have to get rid of this 5. I want to move that to the other side. Otherwise, it may make completing the square a little confusing, okay? So this is going to equal a positive 5. Let's complete the square. So for this minus 2x, I would have to add, it's uh, going to be that negative 2, but over 2, because we're going to cut that in half and square it. That's a positive y squared. And over here as well, we're going to add half of that middle term. That's a negative 6, which is squared. And just evaluating these, this would be negative 2 over 2, which would be negative 1 squared, which is just going to be end up, end up being 1. So I've got plus this, but I need to add it to the other side as well. We're going to add this one as well, so that's going to be negative 3 squared, which is going to end up being plus 9, which again, I will have to add to the other side. Everything else was the same. And we can evaluate that 5 plus 1 plus 9 is 15. So all these equal 15. Now, we'll just make these uh, square binomials. So for example, let's just focus on the x's right there. Again, we could use any form of factoring that we want for this. But for this one, notice what was inside that parentheses was a minus 1. So it's really going to be x minus 1 here that's squared. Then we're going to add this to the y values, which we're going to square as well. And what was inside the parentheses from completing the square was a minus 3. And all of this is going to equal 15. So from here, uh, we can see that we have an h and a k value, which would be 1 and 3, right? Uh, the problem with this one is that maybe we can get confused with the radius. Well, this is 15. Well, what is squared? What squared would give us 15? Well, we'll just square root that 15 to find out, and it would be the square root of 15. That's squared. Yeah, that's a, sorry, 15 right there. Which means that our radius is the square root of 15. Now, we could put this into our calculator to estimate this. Should be about, I don't know, 3.8 maybe. Sorry, around to that's about 3.9 is our radius which is going to help us graph this thing. So I have a center right here with a radius at about 3.9. Now if you want to round to something more than that, like the hundreds or the thousands, that's fine, just it's going to be very difficult to graph, at least on the size graph that I have. So let's graph the center here at 1, 3, which would be about right there. And a radius of 3.9 is about 4 units in every direction, right? So that would give us points at about 1, 2, 3, about right there. And 1, 2, 3, 4, about right there as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, and about 4 right there. Notice I'm just a, almost at 4 units right there. So that's about as close to 3.9 that I think I can get. All we need to do is graph the circle now. That looks a lot better than anything I can draw. So uh, I notice this this line right here, the circle. It's not really getting to that fourth unit at any one of these. So about 3.9. Okay. 
You may want to specify that on a test, right? The radius is 3.9. Otherwise, our graphing can make that look a little bit off.